With Messi finally coming to the MLS and simultaneously making David Beckham cream his knickers by joining Inter Miami, more and more Americans have taken an interest in the game of football. Or soccer, if you pronounce it aluminum rather than aluminium. But the major North American sports are run and set up vastly different from nearly every football league across the world, and taking an interest can leave you more dazed and confused than a Harry Maguire 90-minute performance. See what I mean? So let's simplify. Sports! Simplified. Thankfully, football, or soccer as it's known in Canada, the US, and Australia, basically anywhere you'd find one of these, is a relatively simple sport to begin with. Hence its worldwide popularity. All you need is a ball, or even something resembling a ball. Sorry, Megan, that's not what I meant. Forgetting tactics, formations, nuances in the game, basically ignore this man for right now. I am Jose Mourinho. Football as a concept is easy to understand, and is one of the few sports that allows fans a high amount of actual live play per game duration in any sport, meaning fans get the most bang for their buck, pound, peso, and euro at each match. A match is a game, not whatever you get, or more likely don't get, on Tinder. Now you might be thinking, this is a lot of terminology coming my way. I sure wish someone could make a video on this. So we will. For right now, let's look at the differences between North American leagues and the rest of the world. By far the biggest league in terms of popularity is the English Premier League. Sorry, Saudis. And thanks to the Apple TV hit Ted Lasso, it was given a lot of exposure to unknowing fans. So it's a good example to look at. The Premier League and other top football leagues in the world have less clubs competing in them than the major North American leagues, typically around 20 teams. Unlike sports here, the championship is determined at the end of the season, without any playoffs. The regular season serves as a deciding tournament for the year. Each team plays everyone in the league twice in home and away matches. The benefit is that every fan base gets to see all the teams at least once. The champion is the club that finishes the season with the most points. With three points handed out for a win, one point to each club for a tie, and zero for a loss. And before you think this means less dramatics, look no further than this. Aguero! Or this. Oh, and Gerard has slipped, and Denver Bar is through here for Chelsea. It's Bar! He's or this. The amazing... Leicester City! Throughout the season, there are several cup competitions the teams will compete in as well, much like the in-season tournament being adopted by the NBA this season. Every country has their own domestic cup. The Coppa Italia in Italy, Coppa del Rey in Spain, and in England, depending on which division you play in, there are two or three. The League Cup, available to all the clubs in the top four professional leagues, the historic FA Cup, which can be won by any team in the country so long as they're registered with England's governing body, the Football Association. Yes, even these guys. And everyone's favorite, the Papa John's Trophy. Where as the name suggests, the talent is about as good as the racial tolerance level of Papa John himself. There are even several pan-European tournaments played throughout the season by the previous year's top performing clubs, giving fans multiple stages to support their teams. Similarly to the MLB, NHL, and NBA, soccer across the globe operates on tiered systems. Similar to the days of youth sports, where you constantly disappointed your father by not living up to his expectations when you didn't make varsity, which just exasperated his own feelings of inadequacy, by not living up to his dad's dreams of one day hitting a homer off Nolan Ryan or catching the Super Bowl clinching touchdown on a pass from Joe Montana when all you really wanted to do was make videos on YouTube and maybe a little painting on the side, but instead you're off to your 6 a.m. practices on a team where the coach is also a disappointed father of an athletically inept 14-year-old that just wants to eat ice cream, telling you to drop and give him 20 even though he owns a tire repair and sales shop and knows jack about the sport of baseball. And all you want to do is say, Dad, I just want to go work on my narrator voice and acrylics in my room, but you can't because your cousin just got a full ride to Duke and What's your dad going to say to that? Well, my son has graduated from PowerPoint to Movie Maker, so, you know, there's that. Right? Tiered system. The main difference being the ability for the clubs to move from tier to tier based on performance. Whereas the NBA, NFL, MLB, and NHL will always have the same 30 to 32 teams playing in each season, barring any expansions or relocations, it's never going to work, Gary. The Premier League will always have three new teams each season due to what is called relegations and promotions. Relegation works like this. At the end of each season, the three worst teams in the Premier League get moved down to the next lowest division, the Championship. Or the English equivalent of Division 2, the AHL, AAA Ball, the G League, or the USFL. Similarly, the best three teams in the Championship will be moved up to the Premier League for the following season, with the first top two teams gaining automatic promotion, and the final promotion spot being awarded to the winner of a mini postseason playoff played by the next four teams in the standings. England has four professional leagues, spanning from the Premier League to the Championship, EFL League 1, should be the third professional division, just like the ECHL in hockey or AA in baseball, followed by EFL League Two, which would be the CFL for football. Oh! 
Clubs can also lose their professional status and be relegated beyond League 2 into the semi-pros. If the major North American leagues were to adopt this system, then we would see some real fan-favorite heavyweights in the championship games, like the Orlando Sun Bears duking it out for the Stanley Cup, or the Amarillo Sod Poodles taking the field in the World Series. The MLS, however, has taken a much more North American approach, dividing the league into conferences with a convoluted nine-team per conference playoff format taken away from the simplicity of the game. The MLS also does not use a tiered system, meaning that there's no variety in the game. And rather than scouting or youth player growth to get better, MLS teams rely on a traditional player draft and trade system, which is in part the reason for the lack of talent. While it's more common for clubs in the top leagues to make spectacular falls from grace, such as the collapses of Leeds United, Derby County, Nottingham Forest, Blackburn Rovers, and more recently Sunderland and Portsmouth, making for great dramatics, it is possible for smaller clubs playing in lower divisions to make it to the show. Most recently, Lutontown joining the Prem this season. Check out this stadium. And in recent history, Leicester's Hollywood Championship season in 2016. Each division has its own set of rules for the number of teams that can be relegated, but the standard is typically three up and three down. And one of the most significant things to remember is the tiered system in English or world football does not operate as a farm league. Well, maybe Germany's, but that's another story. Every club is its own entity, having no affiliation to each other, and lower level clubs are not used as systematic development or rehabbing places for specific big club players. The governing body of football and shining beacon of morality, FIFA, does allow for the loaning of players from one club to another on shorter, longer term deals. This is when a club like Manchester City can lend a player to any club registered with FIFA and split some or all of their wages. Reasons for doing so can vary from youngsters needing playing time to improve, seasoned veterans simply wanting more playing time, underperforming individuals, and even salary demands. Player movement works differently as well. While there are some similarities such as free agents, commonly known as a free, or the rare player swap, the major difference is how players move between teams and the lack of a professional draft. Rather than clubs selecting players from junior, college, or amateur leagues in annual drafts, Clubs begin scouting players as young as six, sometimes even younger, to join their youth teams. That can mean leaving your family as a child and traveling across the globe to eat, sleep, drink, and train football for whichever club you sign for, with a startling 3% chance of graduating to the professional ranks. While this does mean thousands of starry-eyed youngsters end up being dropped from their teams at a moment's notice, left with nothing but a footballer's education and a could-have-been story, it also means that player growth and league talent are far more exceptional than the MLS. With the injection of major foreign money into European clubs and leagues, financial power has become a far greater tool than youth development to build a championship squad, bringing us to the transfer market. Unlike any of the other leagues, football relies on transfers for player movement, essentially the buying and selling of players as if they were commodities. It may sound strange, but just ask Peter Pocklington and Wayne Gretzky about it. Clubs the world over are free to buy and sell players to and from teams within their domestic leagues or internationally, placing bids on players until that club agrees to a price. Then the player is free to negotiate contract terms with the purchasing club. Much like stocks, it's more complicated and strategic than first appears. Some smaller clubs are great at developing or investing in young players and selling them for huge profits, and larger clubs simply buy the best of the best to chase glory. And much like that one friend we all have who watched The Big Short or The Wolf of Wall Street and now thinks he's a financial guru, coming to you with a half-cocked plan to invest in crypto right before it crashed, some clubs just sell low and buy high. But that's for another time. And that's football. Simplified.